Hello info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries in regards to one of the most mysterious radio phenomena that we currently refer to as FRB, or fast radio bursts. The very strange but very powerful flashes of radio light that seem to come from every direction in the universe and seem to happen pretty much every single second. And though originally discovered back in 2007, and actually completely by accident, as of this year, over 800 have been officially confirmed, and we still basically have no idea what's causing them. But in some of the recent studies, researchers made some additional discoveries and potentially found some more clues, even finally attempting to explain their origins. And so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail, but first let's start with the basics in case you've never heard of this before. And it all started with this. In 2007, astronomers Duncan Lorimer and David Narkovich completely by accident discovered an unusual radio burst that for a very long time was referred to as a Lorimer burst. And though at first it was believed to be maybe an artifact, even produced by something as simple as a microwave oven, years later it was confirmed to be real. And within just a few years, many such signals have been discovered, and in five years, in 2012, researchers even discovered one of these signals that seems to actually repeat over and over and over again. This was a signal FRB 121102. And well, since then, a lot of researchers tried to do their best to explain these unusual phenomena by basically trying to figure out where they're actually coming from, thus working out what could possibly cause them. Now, first of all, we know that these are definitely not some kind of an extraterrestrial intelligence. All of these signals seem to be entirely natural, and they all seem to contain extremely different types of frequencies, and are usually very polarized, suggesting magnetic origins. But they're also extremely powerful. Many of these signals seem to come from hundreds of millions or even billions of light years away from us, and so something very, very powerful has to be able to produce them. And one of the ways researchers try to solve all of this is by basically trying to pinpoint the exact galaxy where these signals are coming from. Because by determining the types of galaxies, we can maybe work out what sort of an object is producing them. And so at first this was done for just a few of these radio emissions, but eventually more and more were extremely accurately positioned in different types of galaxies, eventually helping scientists discover that a lot of them seem to happen in galaxies with very high rate of star formation. And so combining the star formation with the fact that these signals were also magnetized, and in many cases only happened once, and the fact that they only lasted for milliseconds, or in some cases even microseconds, suggested that they were coming from extremely powerful, possibly extremely small objects, such as for example neutron stars, with the first culprit being a magnetar, a highly magnetized but somewhat mysterious neutron star that's essentially the most powerful magnet in the universe. With this hypothesis also being reinforced when we finally discovered one of these FRBs from right here in the Milky Way, from the region where there is a magnetar that's also emitting different X-rays. You can learn about this discovery from just a few years back in one of the videos in the description. And so if this was coming from magnetars, could it also maybe come from other neutron stars, such as for example pulsars? And that's basically the question asked in this recent study. Here, by assessing 128 non-repeating FRBs, researchers focused on a property known as polarization. And specifically on how polarized the light coming from these signals was, because normally, if it comes from certain objects, it's going to have certain type of polarization. Here we're talking about the property of light, where the light basically becomes kind of shifted. And so by looking at 128 of these signals, and by comparing these signals with radio signals from known pulsars, researchers discovered that polarization was actually quite different. If these signals were coming from the same type of an object, you would expect them to have extremely similar polarization, or at least something that's relatively similar. Here though they were entirely different, and even different from one another, suggesting that maybe it's not actually always magnetars, and sometimes they're formed by something entirely different. And that point makes even more sense, because we know that some of these signals are repeated quite regularly, and some of them only seem to happen once, with additional studies trying to discover what else it could be. And one of these studies focused on the FRB known as 2020-1124A. It was discovered in 2020, and the source in this case was approximately 1.3 billion light years away from us. And here, intriguingly, scientists discovered two repeating FRBs that also seem to be physically associated with some kind of a persistent radio source. In other words, there might have been some kind of a different radio source, in a very similar vicinity. But then they also discovered a third weaker source, 
basically confirming that there's something going on in this whole area that might be responsible for the fast radio burst as well. And these persistent radio sources have been discovered around other FRBs and potentially are connected to them directly. With the explanation in this case basically being some kind of a really large plasma cloud, or essentially a nebula. In other words, the explanation here is very likely some kind of a magnetar and possibly some other objects, all inside a really large nebula containing tons and tons of plasma. And it's the magnetar in this case very likely causing FRBs by stimulating the surrounding ionized nebula, with something else powering the other radio sources visible from very far away but not as powerful. So basically this other explanation once again involves magnetars, but in this case inside a really large nebula. Or at least that's the explanation for some of them, because other observations seem to be from entirely different places and with entirely different properties. And here we have two recent papers from November of 2024 that for the first time ever discovered different FRBs coming from large elliptical galaxies which don't actually produce that many stars. Here's roughly what the galaxy looks like and the potential location of the FRB. And while surprisingly, this doesn't really fit any predictions or any explanations, suggesting that FRBs can indeed be produced through some other means. And that's because this is a really old, very massive and very luminous elliptical galaxy, approximately 2 billion light years away from us, that does not seem to possess any star formation right now. All of the stars here are basically ancient and there are no visible star forming regions anywhere around the galaxy. Intriguingly, this is also the most massive and the brightest FRB host as of 2024. But as you can see, it's not localized to the galaxy itself, so it is actually coming from somewhere else and in this case implied to be some kind of a globular cluster, or possibly a swarm of stars very close to the galaxy. And at first this was super bizarre, until scientists realized that something similar was actually seen in 2020 as well. This was technically the closest extragalactic FRB coming from a nearby galaxy M81. And in this case it was actually localized to a place where there seems to be a globular cluster, or at least a location with a lot of ancient stars as well. Which basically implies that this is maybe a different mechanism and the only explanation we have potentially involves some kind of a collision. For example, collision between two white dwarfs or maybe a white dwarf and a neutron star which we know definitely exist in a lot of these objects. Most globular clusters are basically ancient and so they do contain lots of neutron stars and lots and lots of white dwarfs. But sometimes these objects can collide and the resulting mass transfer could actually create what's known as accretion induced collapse. And that, in theory, at least based on various studies, can actually produce a magnetar as well. And so at least according to some models that we have, maybe it's magnetars once again. Maybe their production can also produce FRBs, which can possibly explain why we're seeing these signals coming from extremely ancient objects. And intriguingly, a completely different paper, in this case a paper you can find in the description by Deng Pham and his team, proposes something entirely different, but something we've actually discussed previously in a video something like 5 years ago. Maybe this is indeed magnetars, but in this case the signals themselves are only produced when something falls on its surface. And in this case maybe some kind of a planetesimal or an extremely large asteroid. And here an impact on the surface of a magnetized neutron star would produce an enormous explosion. Basically one of the most powerful electromagnetic bursts we've ever seen. And so this study tackles this mechanism, discovering that it's also possible. And so maybe this is just a bunch of magnetars eating a bunch of planets. But then on top of this, researchers analyzing various nearby FRBs were mostly able to connect them to a lot of spiral galaxies and a lot of galaxies containing high amounts of metals and a lot of star formation. And so here these galaxies had a really high chance of having some kind of a supernova, for example a core collapse supernova that would produce a neutron star. But these galaxies are also filled with a lot of really massive binary stars that sometimes collide as well. And so the conclusion from one of these papers was that maybe it is the collisions that basically produce magnetars and it's these powerful magnetars that then produce FRBs, mostly as a result of their powerful radiation slamming into some of the nearby material left behind by these massive massive stars. So kind of like what you see right here. This is the famous WR124 recently imaged by the James Webb. But having covered these explanations, the main conclusion here is that there is no conclusion. Right now there are a lot of different propositions and a lot of explanations that do make sense, but none of them seem to apply to everything. As a matter of fact, here's one of the more recent examples 
that seems to be unique as well. This particular Farby was detected when the universe was only 5 billion years old. This is literally the most distant signal seen so far, which by extension also makes it the most powerful. It seems to be at least 4 times more powerful than the previous record holder, and it was only discovered by accident when Hubble was able to pinpoint the galactic location where this signal came from. And here once again we have a bizarre collection of galaxies, and specifically as many as 7 galaxies, that seem to be merging, which of course implies star formation and possibly merging stars. But here, at this point, we really have no idea. A lot of these signals seem to be just too different, and quite a lot of them make no sense. And because so many are even repeating, and in some cases repetitions also don't make sense, basically they're not very regular and not predictable, even after 17 years, this is still a really big mystery. But luckily for us, in 2025, Chime, which you see right here, is going to be publishing its new catalog with approximately 4200 detections collected between 2018 and 2023. That means that it was able to detect at least 3 signals every single day. And so following this new catalog, we might actually have some more data and some more hints on what's producing these very strange radio signals. Right now, the most likely answer is still a magnetar or some kind of a magnetar related event, but chances are that at least some of these signals are actually produced by something entirely different. And so once we have some updates, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the previous videos on this topic in the description below, but also check out previous explanations on the other radio mystery, orcs or odd radio circles, that was potentially explained earlier this year. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.